imagine there was some kind of magical way that your car could communicate with you and let you know that your tires need some air or that you have a flat tire that needs to be fixed. Well, guess what? There is, and it's called TPMS, Tire Pressure Monitoring Systems, and uh, we're gonna get into that, so stay tuned. Now, if you have a vehicle that's older than 2009 and it doesn't have TPMS, the old way of doing it was actually going around the vehicle before you started driving. It was called a pre-driving inspection, kind of a safety thing that you were actually supposed to do and it said it in your owner's manual. Walk around the vehicle and look at the tires and make sure you don't have a flat tire before you start driving. But uh, with this new technology, a light will pop up on the dash whenever you have one or more tires that are below specification letting you know you have a potential flat or just low pressure and you need to go fill them up. Now the TPMS systems have two different ways of telling what the tire pressure is. There's a direct method and an indirect method. The direct method means that there is some kind of sensor that is talking to the computer in the car telling it what the pressure is. Now that might be communicating through Bluetooth or even just old school radio frequency with a transmitter and a receiver. Now the indirect method uses wheel speed sensors to measure each individual wheel and how well it's rolling down the road. If if all four sensors are detecting that the wheels are all rolling the same amount, then that means the tire pressures should be the same. However, if we have one tire that is a lot lower than the other, it's going to have a lot more resistance and it's going to be having some issues rolling and um, that can be slightly picked up on a wheel speed sensor and pop up on the dash telling you you may have a low flat tire. One of the best ways to tell if a vehicle is equipped with TPMS sensors and whether there's actually a problem with the TPMS sensor is to hop into the vehicle Put the key in, turn it on, and look for a symbol that looks like a cross section or a cutaway of a tire with a little exclamation point. The other symbol it might look like is just says the letters TPMS. Okay. Now, when you turn the key on, it'll show it to you. So that tells you you have the TPMS system. And then once you start the vehicle, if it goes away right away, then you know there's nothing wrong with the system. If it stays on, then that means there is something wrong with the system. It could be just low pressure or there might actually be something wrong with one of the TPMS sensors. So turn the key on. There's the symbol right there. So we do have TPMS and notice that it went away. So that means we have no problems with this vehicle. All right, I'm gonna simulate what happens when you lose your tire pressure. So let's pretend we've got a nail in this tire and air is dropping. I have my cell phone camera on the dash and so at a certain PSI, when the car deems it's not safe and wants to give you a heads up, it'll pop up and we'll um, splice the two videos together so you can see this in action. All right, the lights popped up on the dash and I'll splice that together to show you guys that. So I'm just gonna put air back in and uh, you can see that when the tire pressure is proper that the light goes out too. Light just went out, so that's proper PSI. And another indicator whether you have TPMS sensor on your vehicle or not is whether you have a flexible movable valve stem or if you have a fixed rigid bolted down valve stem. If you have a, a rigid one, you're gonna have TPMS sensor because that's to help retain the sensor and not have any issues. Now, it's not 100% though. For example, this vehicle is a 2011 and it has a movable valve stem, but it still has TPMS. If you're working with TPMS sensors, then you're gonna have to get yourself one of these TPMS scan tools. And what this guy does is it lets you communicate with those TPMS sensors uh, before you even start the job to make sure that they don't have a broken sensor before you start or if one of these sensor fails or the battery goes dead in them and you need to replace with some aftermarket sensors, then you can use this tool to reprogram it and tell the computer what's going on with it and um, that way you can replace them. Since this vehicle actually has nothing wrong with it, I'm just gonna show you a test before you touch which makes the sensor communicate with the tool and so you can check whether it's good and the battery and check the pressures and that kind of thing. So I'll run you through this one. So we want test before you touch. And you put what it is, and this is a 2011 Ford Escape. So Ford Escape 2011. And then you just walk through. So it wants you to go to the front left vehicle, which is where we're at right now. And it says press test to activate left front. So in this case, the test is this function here. And um, we're using Bluetooth here. So you're supposed to put this right against the tire, pointing to the sensor. 
and it says it's receiving data and that beep tells you it's done and right off the bat it does tell you some info so it showed it really briefly there it'll be at the very end and now it's telling us to go to the next front right tire uh, but you can see right there it's saying 35 psi on the front left right front vehicle receiving data This one's taking a little longer for some reason, but there's the beep. And we got some data on it, 37 PSI. And go to the rear right. Okay, rear right. It's receiving data. Alright, so it's already jumped. I'm trying to get to show you the info. It'll be at the end. So this one's 33 PSI, and now it's wanting the left rear. All right, receiving data on this one. All right, at this point, it's telling us to connect it to our OBD2 system and then turn the ignition on and then press enter. All right, you take your OBD2 port from your TPMS scan tool and you put it to your DLC connector. The other end of the cable and you put it into the bottom of the scan tool. So now we're going to turn the ignition on. All right, press enter. So now it's reading the VIN, getting some information from the car itself. And there is zero trouble codes, but we already knew that from checking for whether the light went out on the dash after we started it up. So I'll press any key. And at this point we could save it, we could print it. I'll save it here just in case so I can show you guys the info. All right, so here's our test. So you can see that, first off, all four sensors are working because we actually have the tire pressure that's going on in each of the corners of the car. And uh, so there's a little bit of different pressures. They're above the 30 PSI that the vehicle wants, so that's why the light is out. But I just moved inside so we can see this a little bit better. So uh, once I've got the data in here, use the up and down arrows to go where I want. So if I want to look at the actual sensor data, so each sensor has its very own serial code and sometimes when you're replacing sensors for an aftermarket one you will actually need this identification number so that you can reprogram the sensor especially if it's out of the vehicle and you can see there's our sensors and telling us what the pressure is and what corner of the vehicle it is and there's even a spare tire that we forgot to test right now if we had that tpms light staying on our dash then we would have an obd code that we could look up and that would be where you would want to look it up and if you wanted to look up what that decal is in the driver's side door jam from here, you could even do that. So it's telling us here that they want 30 PSI for the front and the back. Pretty cool TPMS kit from Bartek. This is a Bartek Pro 400. Uh, it's got everything you need to do this stuff. And it's even got a little magnet in here. So some TPMS sensors need to have a magnet to relearn. Basically just tells the computer that this is the sensor I want to relearn. Something really cool included with this kit is wireless charging. Now what's cool about this is we just learned about this in the relay video that I did a couple weeks ago. So basically what's happening is there's a coil of wires in here and when the electricity goes through the coil of wire we get an electromagnetic field. And inside the scan tool itself is yet another coil of wires. And when the two sit together, the electricity goes through saturates the coil in the, in the unit itself, and then every time the AC voltage switches, which it does constantly, there's a collapse of the magnetic field, and when we have the collapse of the magnetic field, that we get a little bit of electricity induced into this tool, and that's how it's charging. So very cool, you just plop it on top, and there you go. Charger connected. So I went to the parts store and I asked for a 2010 Toyota Camry TPMS sensor so I could do this demo with you guys. Now let's give an example. Let's say that this vehicle, we did a test before you touch and it came back that one of the sensors is not communicating. And um, very common thing for these things is the internal battery fails in them. So these batteries last generally five to 10 years. And um, so if you've got a vehicle around there, and you got one of these fail because of a battery, chances are you got all of them coming up. But anyway, let's say we have one that's failed for some reason, okay? 
Now, if you're going to do the program the sensor rather than relearn, you have to get a sensor that is in this system in order for it to work. So, program sensor, you put in your Toyota Camry 2010, US made, and then it's going to pop up a whole bunch of sensors. So, if the sensor is not in this list, then it's not going to detect it and you're going to have an issue with it. All right, TPMS sensors. So they've got a battery inside them. How long do they last? They last about six to 10 years and um, they last that long because they're not constantly on. They kind of go into a sleep state when the vehicle's not moving and as soon as you get the vehicle moving or start the vehicle and they start communicating, then um, a little bit of battery is used to check on the sensors every now and then. Now when you change one of your TPMS sensors, there's about three different options of what has to happen to be able to reprogram or relearn these things. Now just because you don't have a TPMS scan tool, which can be a little pricey, you know, a thousand bucks or so, uh, doesn't mean that you necessarily can't change your TPMS sensors yourself. Um, some of these sensors can come pre-programmed with your year make model, and often I'm finding a lot of the vehicles that I'm working on, when you put these on, the relearn procedure for the vehicle is simply to drive it around and within a couple kilometers it detects it, senses the pressure, communicates with it and programs it into the car and you're good to go. A second type of way of relearning your sensors is an actual kind of process that you have to do and it's quite convoluted and it's different for every vehicle. So it could involve getting in the vehicle, turning your key to the on position, shutting it off, turning it on, turning it off, doing that three times, leaving it in the on state and then maybe pressing the brake pedal and um, maybe the horn honks to let you know that you have initiated this TPMS relearn process. So you have to look it up for your vehicle. And then to make it even a little bit more difficult, some vehicle manufacturers will recommend that you have to do this process, get that horn to beep, etc. And then you actually need a magnet that you place over top of the valve stem to trigger that sensor to go into a relearn process. So just look it up for your vehicle and um, see what you need. And then the third way, which is getting a little bit more common these days, is you have to have a TPMS scan tool. Now this can usually act as an activator as well, so you don't necessarily need the magnet. And to make things difficult, some things need magnets and a relearn procedure and this. So um, it just really depends on your vehicle. Look it up on Google and you'll know what you have to do. All right, if you have a vehicle with TPMS sensors, when you go to change the tires and take them off the wheel rim, there are some things that you have to know about. First thing you need to know, if this valve stem is in, has one of these TPMS sensors right behind it, it's really susceptible to getting damaged when you're trying to break the bead of the tire and push that tire off the rim. And so if you're not breaking the bead in the right spot, you are going to bust this off every single time. When you're breaking a tire that has a TPMS sensor, you always wanna have the valve stem towards the top here. And then this breaker arm, you're gonna break the bead on this side, which is 90 degrees from that valve stem. Turn it around if you need to break the other side and make sure that the valve stem is now towards the bottom so that you're still 90 degrees from where that valve stem is. And if you have to break the bead on the other side, and flip the tire around, and right here is where the valve stem is. So we're still doing it 90 degrees from there. And if you have to break the other side, you spin it around, now the valve stem is down on the bottom, and we're still 90 degrees. So that way we don't break off the sensor with this breaker arm. Once you've broken the bead at a 90 degrees from that valve stem, you can kind of push the tire out a bit and you can zoom in there and you can take a look that this tire just has a round black bump. So that's our standard non-TPMS valve stem and that means the next three wheels that we change here uh, don't have to be too worried about where the wheel is located when we're changing the tire. But if we were to push this back and we were to see a big bulgy plastic piece in the back here against the rim, then we would know that this is TPMS system car and we have to be very careful where we place the tire when we are changing out the tire off the rim. All right, when you have a tire that has TPMS, the recommended procedure is to undo this valve stem simply with a socket or one of these TPMS sensor drivers. Undo the nut on top. take the washer off and then you push down on the tire and that lets you get the sensor out so that it won't get squished when you do the tire removing process. Now when you go to put this TPMS sensor back in, make sure you got a new gasket or a rubber seal in here when you put it in. 
push down on the tire, insert it in the valve stem hole, put your washer on this side of the rim, put your nut down, and these things have to have a very specific torque. It's somewhere around 30 to 80 inch pounds, and I'm talking inch pounds, it's really quite delicate. So you're gonna need yourself an inch pound torque wrench and a socket so you can tighten that up and uh, not bust these off. These are quite delicate, so make sure you don't just kind of do it by hand. Now the recommended procedure if you are changing tires on a vehicle that has TPMS sensors is to remove that TPMS sensor so it doesn't get damaged. And while you're in there, you're supposed to seal the little, change the little O-ring or the seal so that you don't have any air leaks in the future. However, a lot of shops uh, have workarounds so that they don't have to disturb that seal and don't take it off without breaking it. So this is the steps for that. Okay, now once you've lubricated the tire to be able to take the tire off without ripping it, the thing you need to watch is where you are placing the sensor. So when you are taking the first top side of the tire off, this valve stem needs to be back behind the tail of the feather for the duck head, like this. Now there's two reasons for this placement of the valve stem behind the tail of the duck's head. First reason is when you go to put your tire iron on the bill of the duck's head, if the sensor's right here, when you go down like that, you've already stabbed and broken the sensor. So that's reason number one. And then reason number two is as you start to grab the lip of the tire and you are prying it up and over the duck's head, the sensor is the first area that is being cleared by the tire because of where it's being placed. Now that you've got the first lip undone, you still have to get the second lip off and so you need to turn it so that that valve stem goes all the way around 360 degrees and is back in the same position so that we can still not smash the sensor with the pry bar and it's the first area the tire clears. When we are putting a tire onto a rim that has TPMS sensors, there's a second placement for where the valve stem has to be, and it's going to be up at the front here. So right at the front, and then the reason why we have the valve stem positioned to the very front of the machine in relation to where the duck's head is, is that when I go to put this tire on, I'm going to put it over the back feather of the duck's tail feathers, under the head, and you'll notice that this bottom lip actually clears the sensor here by quite a bit and so there's no way it's going to touch the sensor or damage it when we go to put the tire on. Okay, now that we've got the first lip in, we still have to get the second lip in, so we also have to get that valve stem to turn around one, 360 degrees right back to the front of the machine for the same exact reason. So put your tail feathers, put the tire over the back of the tail feathers, under the duck's head, and uh, you can see that this is going to clear here when we go ahead. So if you are a shop that's getting into a lot of vehicles that have TPMS sensors, it's gonna have to get some tool upgrades as well. So here is a TPMS tool set and what is typically found in these things is you're going to have a screwdriver in here that's got the shape that's needed to take out the valve core out of your valve stem. We've got an adjustable inch pound torque wrench uh, because these things have to be tight enough that they're not going to loosen up but if you go too tight with a regular torque wrench you're, you're going to bust them off. Some sockets that'll fit most of the TPMS sensors. Here's a little installer tool that you can screw onto there and pull it up into the rim. And there's a little plastic non-marring nut wrench to be able to undo and take off that holding down nut on our TPMS sensor. And then some pre-calibrated torque wrenches that already have our Torx bits for certain TPMS sensors that have those to mount. And then we've got a removing tool for taking out any of the seals or the grommets that some of these TPMS sensors have for keeping the air inside the wheel. So, nice little kit pretty much a needed thing if you are a shop that's working on TPMS vehicles all the time.
All right, that's a wrap on another video from Way of the Wrench and on how to become a gearhead, this time on tire pressure monitoring systems. So the next time your buddy is giving you grief, you say, dude, my tire's smarter than you. And when he goes, huh? You just say, exactly. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, put them down below and I will get back to you swiftly. And in the meantime, take it easy.